I'm Frances Moore LaPay, and this is my third Thought Spark on Courage. Courage is contagious. But to talk about courage, we have to talk about power, our own, because if we feel powerless, it's awfully hard to feel courageous. Too often I hear people repeating that cliche, you know, I'm just a drop in the bucket, insignificant. But my sense is that we say that only because we can't see the bucket that we're filling up because on a rainy night, buckets fill up really fast, right? So what do I mean by bucket? I mean those big historic advances for humanity, our freedom, our democracy. Yes, those root system changes. Every time that I have been able to glimpse that bucket, it's been momentous and life-changing. Recently, a couple of years ago, was one of those moments. When I marched with Democracy Spring from Philly to Washington, D.C., couldn't believe I did that, and then sat in at the Capitol steps, was arrested with 1,300 people, all for democracy, for money out of politics, for voting rights. So it was a life-changing, I, I, I mean, I was exuberant because I could feel that I was filling up that beautiful bucket of democracy movement in the United States. Now, um, this top-down filling up a bucket metaphor that I'm using here kind of misses another point that's critical, and that is that in today's interconnected world, that our acts are radiating out because always, always someone is noticing. So let me tell you a story that I love from Rebecca Solnit. It's a story about 1961, Women's Strike for Peace, a rainy day in Washington where women were standing up against above ground nuclear testing. They were demonstrating and reportedly President Kennedy was watching on television from the White House. But some of them said they felt futile and even foolish. No one was really watching, they thought. But years later, they learned that that day, that rainy day, Benjamin Spock drove by. And he saw these women and thought, oh, if they could so passionately act on this issue, maybe I should pay attention to it. And he did. And this world-famous baby doctor then became the key opponent of above-ground nuclear testing. And guess what? Within two years, President Kennedy had signed a test ban treaty. Now, that bucket filled up pretty fast. Years later, decades later actually, I was in Leipzig, Germany, and after a speech, I went out, guided by a student, to see the city. And at one point, she pointed to a church. Oh, there it is, St. Nicholas. That's where it began, the beginning of the end of the Berlin Wall. And I said, what? <laughs> I had never known that this church or Leipzig had a particular role to play in the fall of the Berlin Wall in November of 1989, but my guide went on to lay it out for me. She said that by October already 70,000 people were meeting in, in Leipzig and in churches and it was growing and spreading throughout Germany. And later I read an account by Marcus Legal, who was then 14 years old, and he told us about his family experience, where they arrived at St. Nikolai Church at 4 p.m. for a six o'clock prayer service, and it was already full. So they had to go down the street to another church. It was full too, but they squeezed their way in. He said, it was mom, dad, and me. We were family, but not just us, everyone in every church at that time. He describes a minister who says that it's impossible to hold a candle and a stone at the same time. And so the police began to move in and talk to the protesters, eventually then retreating. He described the steps of the state Stasi, it's called, the center of security that had abused and spied on people for decades. He described the steps as a wash in candles, a river, a sea, a light. Four weeks later, 
the Berlin Wall fell. And an East German official later said, hmm, we thought we'd have planned for every eventuality, but we did not plan for candles and prayers. Marco's experience reminds me that unless we act, we will never know our power. And even when we do act, we will never know its historic impact. But two things I feel are quite certain. One is that every advance for human freedom and democracy, whether it be the end of Soviet rule or rise of real democracy in America, begins with a few people, the first few, willing to just go for it. And second, very clear that we are social animals. And what that means is that someone is always noticing and that someone's sense of possibility is then changed by our act of courage. That is our power. Let us celebrate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.